Welcome everyone to chapter 6 of Far From The Madding Crowd. The Fair, The Journey, The Fire. In the previous chapter, we have come across a big tragedy that had happened in Gabriel Oak's life in which he had lost all his money and everything he had ever had. This chapter shows us how Gabriel Oak's life changes after that incident. The Fair Two months have passed since the accident had happened at Gabriel Oak's place. And now this is the month of February. And in the month of February, there would be a hiring fair at a country town called Kester Bridge. This hiring fair would be attended by the people who would be seeking jobs and by the people who are ready to give jobs. So among the people who are seeking jobs or among the laborers, we could see wagoners or shepherds or many such people. Thus the wagoners and carters, those who ride carts or wagons, they would be carrying, they would be having a piece of whip cord with them that would be twisted around their hats. And the thatchers, the people who would be weaving straw, the thatchers would wear a fragment of woven straw on them. And the shepherds, the people who tend sheep, the shepherds will be having sheep crooks with them. So this is how the hirers would recognize the people at a glance. A person who would be carrying a, a woven straw would be easily re recognized as a thatcher who is, in, who is seeking a thatching job. Similarly, a person with a sheep crook would be easily identified as a shepherd searching for a job. Thus, the situation required was known to the hirers at a glance. They just have to look at the laborers and they can identify what is the job they are looking for. So, our Gabriel Oak, who had lost almost everything from the sheep accident, he thought of attending the fair and thus he came and attended the fair. At first, he thought of becoming a bailiff. A bailiff is an overseer of an estate or a farm. A big farm uh, would require an overseer, someone who looks after all the affairs or uh, the affairs in general. So at first he thought of becoming a bailiff and thus he attended the fair thinking of someone hiring him as a bailiff. At the end of the day he found himself unemployed and thus he thought he'll visit a smith who would make a crook for him. You have seen the shepherd's crook in the uh, earlier slide also. Here as well you can see the crook. This is the crook. So he made the smith make a, a crook for him and he attended the fair again. Then the people, the hirers would come and they would be asking these questions. I'm reading from the text. Where do you come from? Norcombe. That's a long way. 15 miles. Whose farm were you upon last? My own. So, when Gabriel Oak tells that he had been working in his own farm, the people, the hirers would refuse to believe him. If he had a farm, if he had owned a farm, why is he coming and looking for a shepherd's job? So they refused to believe him and thus he didn't get a job in that fair. Gabriel Oak learned that there is another fair that is going to happen the next day at a place called Shortsford. When he had made inquiries about how far is Shortsford, he got this reply that is, it is 10 miles the other side of Weatherbury. So Shortsford is 10 miles from Weatherbury. When he heard the word Weatherbury, obviously, what strikes his mind would be Bathsheba. She had gone there. He knew that. And he again asked, how far is Weatherbury from Casterbridge? 
where he is. It is five to six miles away from Casterbridge. So he thought that he, from Casterbridge he'll go uh, in the direction of Weatherbury, and from there he'll obviously proceed to Shotsford, and thus uh, he thought he'll take rest at Weatherbury. He started his journey in the direction of Weatherbury, and it grew night. It grew darker. On his way, he saw a wagon, a lonely wagon, which was not occupied by anyone. He thought of lying upon the hay in the wagon instead of paying for lodging because he should be careful with the minimal amount of money he has in his hands. And thus he thought instead of giving this money or instead of paying this money for lodging, it would be better if I sleep in this wagon itself. Anyway, no one is there in this wagon and there is hay in the wagon as well. So I can sleep on the hay. Thus, he got into the wagon and he slept. After some time, he woke up suddenly and found that the wagon is in motion. He also saw that there were two people in the wagon whom didn't or who didn't notice the presence of Gabriel Locke in the wagon. From the direction of the stars, Gabriel Oak calculated the time and it was 9 o'clock at night. From the conversation between the two people in the wagon, or from the way they addressed each other, he came to know that their names were Billy Smallberry and Master Poorgrass. These people were talking about a woman. They were telling that this woman had a fine, handsome body. She was proud. She was very vain. And they were saying that it is said that every night at going to bed, she looks in the glass to put on her nightcap properly. So they were saying this a woman, she is very vain that just before going to bed, she would be carefully examining her herself in the mirror and she arranges her nightcap properly. They were also saying that she is not a married woman. Upon hearing these remarks from the people, Gabriel Locke suddenly thought of Bathsheba. Bathsheba's image flashed in Gabriel Locke's mind. He slipped out of the wagon and seen by the two people and he started walking. As he was walking, he noticed an unusual light at about half a mile. As he looked, the glow increased, the light's glow increased and he understood that something was on fire. He went near the light or he went near the fire and he saw that it was a rickyard that was on fire. At first he couldn't see anyone near the rickyard but as he approached the yard he could see that many people were there near the yard. He could see that the main corn produced, so the farm would be producing corn, and the main corn produced of the farm, farm was right behind the burning rick. So he started to work with the other men to douse the fire. He had this uh, excellent managerial skills, and also with the help of the crook that he had in his hands, he gave them directions, he asked them to bring water, bring ladder, he led the process. He led the whole process of dousing the fire. They succeeded in the effort and they managed to save the corn, main corn produce of the farm from the fire. Once the fire was completely doused, we can see that there were two women at the end of the farm who were standing in the darkness away from the fire or uh, away from the light of the fire. One of the women was on a pony and the other was standing by the side, by her side on foot. These women, they uh, made inquiries or they tried to find out whose shepherd the man was. 
nobody knew who gabriel was and as the woman on the pony she had asked one of her workers to go and thank the shepherd who was gabriel oak when the worker conveyed the woman's message to gabriel oak he asked where is your master the farmer asked gabriel kindling with the idea of getting employment that seemed to strike him now now he thought that he may get employment here itself so the worker is answering tis isn't a master tis a mistress shepherd a woman farmer eh believe and a rich one too said a bystander lately a cow came here from a distance to con her uncle's farm who died suddenly so here we are getting the idea that the farm is of a woman the farmer is a woman farmer which wouldn't be a common sight during that time and thus he was amused and at that time someone else contributed that this woman had come just recently and she took took her uncle's farm she had inherited her uncle's farm who died all of a sudden once the work was over gabriel oak went near the woman who was on the pony oak his features smudged grimy and undiscoverable from the smoke and heat his smoke front burnt into holes and dripping with water so here we can see that oak is completely covered or oak is dirty he is covered in the soot in the ash and thus he is not easily recognizable and the woman on the pony she had also covered her face with a black cloth he went near her he lifted his hat with respect and not without gallantry stepping close to her hanging feet he said in a hesitating voice do you happen to want a shepherd ma'am so he is asking ma'am do you want a shepherd she lifted the wool veil tied round her face and looked all astonishment gabriel and his cold-hearted darling Bathsheba ever day were face to face so they recognized each other the woman on the pony was Bathsheba ever day you would have guessed her and she also recognized him to be Gabriel Oak and here you can see how is Bathsheba referred to as cold hearted darling Bathsheba did not speak and he mechanically repeated in an abashed and sad voice do you want a shepherd ma'am so here we can see that gabriel oak had recognized bathsheba but even at that time even at that point gabriel oak was not happy because he had lost everything he had lost all the hopes he had in his life and he now understands his position so he is asking her do you want a shepherd ma'am so we can view this incident as a coincidence that had happened and with that coincidence gabriel had reached bathsheba we can witness we can read how their life changes or what happens in their life as we read the chapters as we read the novel for now chapter 6 has come to an end thank you for listening